It's great seeing you. I haven't seen you since, um, I think, 2018 or 19. It's the last yeah. time I saw you. I was, I was definitely a way different person. I was yeah. very eager and very <laughs> eager yet um, closed off. Um, I think I was very scared of what was happening within the space. Um, you know, that's the nice thing about failure. It forces you to say, I didn't die, I'm still here. So a bit more open now. Yeah. Mm. So now you're less eager or I wouldn't you still say less have that? eager. Um, I would say that it's now appropriately channeled um, towards the right, uh, towards the right things. Um, yeah. There's some vanity metrics that I don't care about. Um, yeah. You know, we've, we've finally figured out what, what matters and what we can do yeah. to make sure that what doing what matters, everything else is just white nose. I could kill less. So yeah, definitely less um, in everyone's face, if that makes sense. Yeah, I suppose. Mm. It doesn't make me <laughs> money. I'm not there. I'm not there. <laughs> um, so, you're, I think for anyone watching, they're probably wondering, man, these guys just went straight into it. I don't ah. even know who this is. <laughs> you're uh, Gugu Siso. Siso. S-I-S-O. Gugu Leto Siso. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys. The Shona and me is not, is not cooperating. But Gosh, yeah, um... Gugu Siso, uh, you're CEO of mm. Tumeza, CEO and founder, right? Co-founder, yes. Co-founder, mm. Tumeza. What are you guys, uh, I'm not going to ask what you're doing right now, but like, why did you start the company like four years ago? What did you set out to do? Um, there are two stories, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, the official version um, is that um, we're trying to solve data inefficiencies that are taking place within the logistical space, right? Yeah. Um, the unofficial version is, to be honest, I was frustrated by the fact that um, formal entities such as XYZ Logistics, right? Yeah. I don't think such a company exists. Um, <laughs> who are not going to the rural areas. And I just moved back to Zim from Namibia. And that, for me, didn't make sense, right? Yeah. Why can't I send my package to a place such as Blamtree? Why can't I do XYZ? So... It was literally me trying to figure out, test a hypothesis to see if I could um, get good to certain places using the power of um, the informal network. Yeah. So um, I managed to test that, that hypothesis well, and then um, a business model came out of it in essence. Yeah. It was me just being stubborn, trying to figure out if something <laughs> worked. Yeah, that's the unofficial version, guys. That's that's also the version I know. I, I remember this. Uh, wow, the fact that I do is kind of surprising, but I do uh -huh. remember that it was the a package power. you had to. I don't remember if it was medication or something. Yeah, it was medicine for my for grandma. grandma. Yeah, but yeah. Oh God, I still I still remember that day. It was so frustrating. Try to yeah. go to like a bus station. You know, you move from the town center, all the formal places. They're like, yeah. no, we're not going to do that. Then you end up at a bus station at a Rengini trying to negotiate with the windy. The random person. For sure, you're not even sure if No those, trust, ah, nothing. You're not even sure if those kids are going to get there. You know, your grandma is calling you up saying, buy my pills. So you're like, I'm trying my best. That for me was like, people can't believe in this way. This does not make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose coming from a place like Namibia, that's kind of crazy because that's like a more, <coughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. that's a more uh, functional economy. Yeah, I would say in terms of... Um, Startup definitely. Um, systems are definitely more in place um, in terms of logistics. Yeah. Um, they're definitely more connected um, in terms of their urban as well as peri-urban as well as rural areas. So comparing that to here was a bit of a, a bit of a culture shock. Yeah. But I'm glad to see that you know there are more startups that are definitely in the space. We may have left, but um, people are still in the space and trying to solve the same problem. So yeah. Good luck and kudos to them. So when you started out, what exactly were you guys doing? What was your role in this, uh, in this space? Okay. So uh, our initial role was to uh, provide the logistical backbone um, for most of these e-commerce startups that were popping up, right? Yeah. So as we all very well know, most of you guys, most of the guys that are there will just maybe create a platform on Shopify um, if they're being, you know, um, resource efficient. Yeah. Or they'll create their own site. Cool, now you've got your dropshipping platform, but you don't have the logistics um, to get your goods Actually, to, let's yeah. say, to Fari. Yeah. So we came in uh, providing the support. Um, we worked with um, clients such as Fresh in a Box, um, they really took a chance on us when we first started out in Skies. Um, and then we eventually expanded from doing Last Mile to Fright to now working with clients such as Pick and Pay, who we're now providing them with access to uh, trucks um, to move their bulk goods um, within within Zim. So we moved from, um, you know, like a small, small cars like a Vitz or a three-wheeler yeah. to like uh, coordinating <laughs> 30 to 34 ton trucks, all from that thing of, 
is it possible for me to move my goods <laughs> <laughs> from point A to B using someone's vehicle that I don't yeah. own? That's literally how it all started off. And that's that's one of the things that's like uh, a bit crazy to me about your story is that um, you had uh, proven your yeah, hypothesis, yeah. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I did. Yeah. But you actually went like above and beyond. Where did that then come from? Like that curiosity or that ambition to be like, okay, let's go it's further. Literally, it's literally just listening to the market, right? Um, so how we moved into the fight space is we had been doing some some deals for pick and pay on the lower scale. Yeah. They're like, okay, guys, um, we have a relationship with you guys. We trust you. We don't know a lot of logistics companies in in um, in in Wulawayo that were able to trust. Can you guys coordinate this? They're yeah. like, okay, who do I know who owns a truck? Get that one uncle with a truck, you know, <laughs> get two uncles with a truck. Next thing you know, you've got a fleet of 100, 500 trucks and you're yeah. able to get those, um, those goods moving. But um, I would say it's truly um, curiosity to see is my hypothesis going to work and how far can I push it, push it. <laughs> um, forgetting at the end of the day that you also still need to monetize it. So uh, guys, don't forget that. While you're trying to prove things, don't forget that you need to make money from them. Eh? So I think if I could do it again, I would definitely switch it a little bit, start with monetization, monetization. prior to can I test this hypothesis? So what were the challenges with that, like in terms of monetizing? Um, how were you doing it and where was that like falling apart? Cool. Last mile, I'll start with last mile because there are two different models, right? Last mile yeah. and fright. Last mile volumes, guys. Volumes. Um, <laughs> volumes are the buzzword that you need in order to survive. There's a reason why Amazon is controlling most of its own logistics, right? Yeah. If you don't have volumes, um, the margins that you're dealing with on consumers are just too small for you to say, I'm charging $10 for one KT in Harari. It won't make sense. Yeah. So if you don't have those volumes, you're now going to be forced to increase your costs to the end consumer, that's not going to make you attractive, right? Yeah. That's where it went flat. Fright. Fright, on the other hand, um, the volumes are significantly less, but the margins are higher. Larger quantities, right? Yeah. But now cash flow. Cash flow is now going to, to mess you over because instead of Fari paying you like on delivery, pick and pay is telling you 30 to 60 days or if, like what's happening. If you're lucky. If you like it, you know, I heard someone screaming about 19, 120 days and I was like, yeah. yo, the kid. And that's, that's essentially four months. Exactly. And this and is you're supposed Zim. to like figure out how to survive. How the hell? It's not even surviving. No right? It's moving the goods within the period of the four months without getting without paid. Without the money, yeah. Because you still have to service that contract, right? It's not like there's a fairy godmother who's like, his oodles of bags. Right? <laughs> the banks are like, okay, 26-year-old person, do you have a house? You're like, no. <laughs> any form of property like i've got a laptop and they're like yeah. not exactly you probably that's not really property, you're not you're not you're not <laughs> you're not exactly an attractive option yeah so yeah it's the reason we failed first one volumes we moved up second one um lack of working capital which is why this is what this is what how it led to what we're doing now we're solving yeah. the problem of why we went under so now you're like playing in finance you're yeah, financing yeah. uh logistics yeah Okay, so how does that work now? So we're now um, a fintech player. Um, in essence, we see ourselves as um, supporting those who power the movements of goods across Africa. In yeah. layman terms, um, let's say your transport has got a contract with, let's say, pick and pay, right? Yeah. Pick and pay will say that they are paying you in 60 days, <coughs> but you need, let's say, the funds up front in order to... You need some funds in order to pay for fuel X, Y, Z yeah. prior to getting paid. So we will then, um, you get onto our platform, list all your loads, um, list all the information that's there. Uh, we'll then provide you with access to that financing um, with the facilitation fee on top for facilitating the financing to uh, one of our credit, uh, credit partners. Yeah. So um, we've been able to get that done. Uh, we're no longer operational in Zim. We did, did a test uh, <laughs> SIs, notwithstanding, <laughs> didn't quite work out for us. So we're now yeah. servicing clients in Zambia, South Africa, and um, Kenya at this point. Yeah, that's actually, I, I, I <coughs> keep in touch with you, not like super yeah. often, mm -hmm. but I had no idea you, you guys are no longer in Zoom. It when didn't did make you, sense. When did you stop? Um, December. December. Oh. Um, it really was... Um, a conversation that we had to have with ourselves that as much as we love Zim, we had been doing a lot within the Zimbabwean space. Yeah. But you have to look at the data and make a decision that makes sense for you as an entity, right? So <laughs> there's just too much going on here. And it's not like we didn't have options. Uh, is that when you say there's too much going on, is that like regulatory? Is that Dude, let's just say macro economy, mac, mac, just say macro and microeconomic <laughs> everything factors, is crazy. everything. You can't budget, you can't figure out what's going yeah. on. 
And as a result, you can't support your transport as well because you don't quite know what they're facing on the other end, right? It's not like payment terms are uniform across the board. So you have one person that will be told maybe 15 days, the other one is being told 90 days, the other one is RTGS, the other one is um, US dollar, the other one is RANS. Now you're like, and now you have to like work around exactly. all of this. Exactly. Now you're trying with, to curate uh, all that data and provide it to your credit providers. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. It does, it's not a, it's not an attractive proposition. I love this place. Would love to come back, but for now, um, it's yeah. definitely not our focus. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's. It's understandable. I yeah. Doing yeah, business yeah. here is yeah yeah. It, it's not ex exactly encouraged. It's like there are not enough uh, factors going in your favor. Yeah, yeah. But I will always say this, guys. Um, if you if you can survive in Zim, you can survive anyway. Because it's definitely a melting <laughs> pot where anything that can happen to you will, will happen, happen to you at some point. Yeah. And within a very short space of time. So <laughs> by the time you get to other markets, you're like, oh, oh you're crying over currency fluctuations only. That's the only thing that's there. Small, small. That's small things. Yeah, yeah, because for us, it's crazy. We don't have like payment systems. You know, it's, it's one, one moment in, we do, the next money, day, uh, ban. Uh, how do you get money in the country? Okay, second time you can get in the country, next thing you can't withdraw it. Next thing yeah, you want to send money out yeah. of the country, next thing you can't. It's a... Uh, and that and that all changes overnight. Like there's no warning. Exactly, well. exactly. Because <laughs> I remember, like December, like our lawyer called me in a panic. He was like, "Is there any money out there?" I was like, "No." He was like, "Thank God, don't give out any more money." I was like, "What is happening?" I was like, "Just give me two days to figure out what the hell is going on." And that's yeah. another thing. You need to have people that are in your corner that have the requisite knowledge and skills to figure out on your behalf what's going on because you as an entrepreneur can't be everything. You can't be a yeah. lawyer, you can't be a tax advisor, you can't be business dev, you, you can't. <laughs> so if that phone call hadn't it happened, <laughs> we'd be there blinking with people owing us money and paying us back in other TGS. Or well, they changed it back yeah. now, but remember there were four months. Where yeah, people but your paid. money's already gone. And, and, and people who, who know about money who we'll take that as an opportunity exactly. to pay everything exactly. off in that exactly. like, exactly. currency. Exactly. It, it works out for them. It's and arbitrage. Just like, our hands are tied. <coughs> it's arbitrage. Yeah. It works out if you can take advantage of it. But, uh, you know, for, for as, the smaller guys, mm, yeah. as law-abiding citizens. Yeah, man. It, it almost feels like you're constantly being punished for being honest doing things the right way yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's... that makes you very unattractive for, to the rest of the <laughs> continent because no one understands i remember at some point <laughs> there was one couple that wanted to enter zima they like talked to google and i was like are you sure they're like yeah, yeah. i'm like mm, have you thought about this they're like uh i was like have you thought about this and they yeah. paid no they're like we paid a managing consultant to give us a, a risk assessment about zima and i'm like so all that i'm telling you was not in that report yeah that's odd because are they really assessing the risk then? <laughs> what risk are they assessing? <laughs> so you mentioned an interesting thing about uh, building teams there. Mm -hmm. uh, lawyers, finance, IT, and stuff like that. Yeah. What's been your approach to that as an entrepreneur uh, in your journey? How have you gotten better at that? Because most people I talk to, mm -hmm. uh, they say it's a nightmare. And I can understand it in that uh, it seems like Zim is like... Uh, Starved for skills. The people who have skills would yeah. rather go out because, yeah, why of course, stay, right? Of course, of course. So, how have you guys like approached that, like hiring out like efficient teams? Um, one, um, the team is extremely diverse. Um, we've got South Africans, Zimbabweans, um, Congolese, um, yeah. I think Kenyans um, on the team. So, we try and hire more on a continent wide spectrum instead of just saying Zim. Okay. Two, um, I really depend on my personal networks to figure out if people may be a fit. Um, at this point, I'm no longer even putting out adverts. They, they don't work, right? So I'll be like, okay, Fari, I'll have a conversation with Fari. I'll be like, Fari, guy, I'm looking for a product owner, right? Product yeah. manager. Yeah. Um, do you know anyone within the space that you think would be a good fit, right? So based on that, you may be like, oh, no, I've got a friend. Have a recommendation, right? We have a conversation. Um, and then we build on trust. Yeah. That's Five that, check. Exactly, exactly. Because, <laughs> um, you know, um, you also wouldn't want to put across, recommend someone that you think would not be great at that job because yeah. your reputation is also He's on, on the risk. line. Yeah, the third one that I've really been doing shamelessly these days is poaching people's stuff. 
if you're not treating your staff members well, just know <laughs> that they are hungry startups out there that will come what and take them. For? Exactly. <laughs> so partners and all these people that you work with, you there's always that one person that you're like, very good at your job. And I can see that you're not appreciated. How would you like to join the winning team? <laughs> that is a bit of yeah. a proven strategy. And, and, uh, and they have industry experience as well, Exactly, I exactly. <laughs> so you're just able to offer them a little bit more than what's happening within the organizations. Um, yeah, so I'd say in conclusion, it's really Africa-wide, um, two personal uh, networks and three. Poaching. Poaching. <laughs> yeah, that's so far, we'll that's see when it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it keeps working as, as sinister as that sounds. <laughs> no, but you know what? With early stage startups, we also have to be very aware with the um, turnover will always be high. Yeah. You can't be like, oh, my day one will be my day one to the end of time. They will yeah. not. Um, one, they'll get better opportunities. Go with God who wish you the best, you know. Yeah. And if you're able to leave on good terms with someone, you know that they're an asset in that other company where, you know, what you if you... Leverage exactly, you for exactly. Else. You don't want to now be like, oh, you are dead we to me. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> Bite the person out for lunch once in a while. What's going on? Yeah. Anything we should know, anything on the horizon that you think might affect us that, you know, we should look out for. Yeah. It's always useful. They are always a useful resource. Yeah. So, yeah. No hard feelings, guys. Eh? So, your HQ is here? There is no HQ. Remote team. We're Everyone all remote. is 100% remote. 100% remote. Um, COVID taught us, taught me rather, a really good <laughs> lesson. Um, Uguti, just... Um, as I was saying, there are some things that are vanity metrics. If you don't need to do it, it doesn't need to happen. Yeah, especially an office. It's a fancy why, why are you paying thing, rent? But... Why am I paying rent, <laughs> right? Why am I paying rent in coffee and uh, Wi-Fi and all these things? Yeah. Um, as opposed to having people work in the comfort of their homes wherever and whenever they can. Yeah, yeah. You're able to then get a more productive staff that's also happier to want to work. Yeah. Right. Um, you, you can be like, okay, yo, bro, I'm not feeling well. I'm going to take a five minute nap and then I'll get up and work. I feel better than you suffering for the next eight hours because you're already in the here. office. Right. And um, you're able to really take advantage. We've really been taking advantage of workspaces such as Slack, um, Trello, XYZ and the cloud. Yeah. The cloud is really like our home to make sure that it works. Um, in future, we definitely want to have a physical HQ. Yeah. Um, but right now, it's there's not no something. Need. Well, there's no need. We're not focusing on yeah. it. We're a pretty small team. We don't need to now start coordinating and say, I want to see your face every morning in person. I don't care. <laughs> Could be working from the Maldives or like as long as you've answered that email, yeah. go with God. Yeah. I don't care what you're doing. So, so that's another interesting thing where, uh, mm. especially like right now, there's um, yeah. kind of a conversation. I'm not sure if that conversation is extending to Zim as well, but just generally, mm. there's a conversation about people going back to the office and stuff like that. In your experience being remote, um, what have been like some of the pros and cons for you guys as an organization? I mean, um, you mentioned productivity. Cool. Yeah, pros, um, co productivity, definitely. Um, you're able to get more from a happier, uh, more relaxed team that's able to spend more time at home, especially those with families. Yeah. Um, you really <laughs> don't take into consideration how much time commuting takes away from people unnecessarily. Like, where the hell are you in traffic for, you know, 30 minutes at yeah. a time in one direction? It's an hour <laughs> wasted of your, your, of your day, your day, your work day, your personal day. There's nothing you're doing in traffic except maybe listening to music and judging other drivers around you, yeah. but that's it, right? Yeah. Especially judging other drivers. Of course, as well yeah. as... Oh, Especially in Harare. Exactly. <laughs> Harare drivers, guys, I will never forgive you, Shep. Anyway, um, number two... Um, uh, pro, pro, um, you're definitely able to be a bit more resource efficient than yeah. you would be if you're working from, from the office, right? So there are a lot of things that you're able to save on. Rent, um, water rates, taxes, um, unnecessary coffee breaks that no one really likes, but yeah. because it's the cheapest <laughs> that you people can afford, it's all you're drinking, right? You're more yeah. capital efficient. Um, three, um, it sounds bad, but you're definitely able to get more from your team. Because you can ask someone, hey, guy, um, I just sent out an email at 10 o'clock. Can you just check uh, on your end if this thing was sent? They're happy to do it as opposed to someone who's living a uh, laptop at home at 5 and saying, do this. Yeah. I'm all for work balance, right? But at the end of the day, you have got a happier team that's willing to do more for you because you've also you've given, you've you've given them something. You've accommodated them as well. So you're able to now save up for things such as, you know, team getaways on money that you would have spent on rent to get to know each other in a space where you're all happy and yeah. relaxed 
and get to actually know each other as opposed to, you know, getting work fatty, who are just like, is this even yeah. the real person? This is not this real it's, person, right? It's really, it's, a, it's, it's an a, avatar. Exactly. <laughs> Kwan's, um, Kwan's Africa uh, Network Connectivity. So yeah. uh, <laughs> that can be a bit fun. Uh, so yeah. a lot of, hello, can you, you provide a me? good wake up and just not work exactly. for the next two days. Exactly, like exactly. And it's not, it's not even just them anymore. Look at what's happening in SA, you know. The blackouts mean yeah. that really at some point person will be unavailable. They are not, it's not that they're unavailable. They're just not reachable, right? Yeah, you can't reach them. Um, it's literally <laughs> network. Um, and I think the last part is people may feel a bit isolated if you don't make the effort to yeah. to meet together at some point regularly. Yeah. There will be some isolation, right? So, yeah, um, I think I think that's, those are the pros and cons that I can think of uh, off yeah. the top of my head. One of the initial difficulties you had as uh, a female founder, and you're saying that, you know, securing the trust of uh, both drivers when you were still... Yeah. Working with uh, drivers as a last mile and mm, freight mm. provider, and then clients, yeah, the, there was almost like a lack of uh, trust or like some sort of condescension because yeah, it's yeah. a female-led business. Is there something you're still facing, and you know how do you how do you deal with these sort of things? Um, definitely still facing it. <laughs> I'd be very naive to say, oh, just because we're now in fintech, we're no longer facing it. We're <laughs> still facing it. Yeah. Um, however, I think uh, my reaction to it has now changed, as I was saying, maturity, right? Yeah. Um, in the beginning, when I first talk, started talking to you, right? Yeah. I don't want to fight people, like, physically. I want to, like, fight people, like, ah, you know who <laughs> yeah, I am, I've worked hard. No, no, I'm just, I don't care, you know. Um, if you're not convinced by what we're telling you, then clearly you're not the right person that we should be talking to. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, so... Um, Bless you. I think it's really... Um, choosing and picking your battles, right? Um, if there are some conversations that I don't need to have and I can put in like a male um, team member, I'll do that. It doesn't hurt me. Yeah. But if it's my bottom line at the end of the day, sucks to be you. Um, but um, I'm definitely more, more, more reserved. I, I choose my battles now. I'm yeah. no longer as triggered as I was back then. Energy yeah, but that's not to say that um, this this is crap that is happening every day to yeah. most female founders and employees across every industry. It just there's just a difference between which industry are you in. There's some industries that are a bit more male dominated statistics, yeah. as opposed to those that are more female dominated. Was I even hate the fact that they are like female dominated, right? Yeah. But um, some perceptions are really ingrained. So, yeah, there's some things that you can't fight and some things that you can't fight against. It's just choose your struggle. Yeah, I yeah. suppose I suppose the best you can do is just do your work. Literally. It? If it doesn't convince someone, then eh, I guess mm. <laughs> there's not much else you can do. Uh, you'll yeah, You'll come back at some point. <laughs> <laughs> That's my that goal. Too. Make yeah. sure that time that, you know, with that resource that you do not have an alternative than to work with because our competitors don't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to come back with with your prejudice exactly. and still like, work I'm something bad. out. <laughs> have a seat. Still mad? Hmm? Still feeling chauvinistic? Have a seat. <laughs> Didn't hold it against you. Or did I? Yeah, it's yeah, that's an interesting conversation. And and I hopefully I suppose it gets better with, with time, or at least I hope it does. We have uh, we just have to put in the work. We just yeah. have to put in the work. Women being in, in entrepreneurship is not um it's not a fad, it's not a phase. We're not all waiting yeah. for, you know, someone to save us. I remember one <laughs> male co industry colleague was like, Ah, good team, female founders, you just put in the work until you know you meet someone rich to marry and I was like, Oh yeah, because you oh, know, Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of like yeah, my end goal is to get married. Conceptions like that where or even if you are successful, there's someone yeah, there's a player in the or, background yeah, or your daddy or your mommy, but like it's yeah. never quite it fathomed never, yeah. that my own maybe, sweat. Yeah, maybe you know, Google is just you know, capable of building startups. You know, startup. you know, like she knows <laughs> what she's impossible. doing. Not the horror, the shock. How could she know what she's doing? <laughs> so annoying. But yeah, 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 I would not say no to a rich husband, though. Not to say, you know, his resources are my resources now for yeah. the betterment of the oh. company. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm also really interested in uh, speaking to you about financing because that's something, that's something you've been aggressive about, I think, oh, 
since since day I will one not stop shouting about it since day I one since 2018 I before not. i even met you and knew you for um shouting Tumeza, about financing yes. i heard about Tumeza winning was it startup boot camp i don't remember what it was but it was really like a, a financing thing so that's a space that you've um you've been in in terms of like uh, as a founder just looking for funds yeah. financing the company um what are like the challenges you face when it comes to like doing so from uh, a zimbabwean led company right and then what has been like your general experience because hmm. i from seeing your journey from the outside in it looks like you have gotten better at this over time so what's what's changed over the years we no longer identify as zimbabwean okay <laughs> that's, so that's so was money afraid of zim very much so i would not lie very much so it still is it's terrified of zim um as i was saying we're no longer active here yeah uh, we have been able to raise uh, an undisclosed amount of angel <laughs> investment i won't tell you people <laughs> but um it's definitely having conversations um one with angel yeah. investors that are people that really understand the the vision that you're trying to drive. I've been very lucky um I think within the last 10 months with this new business model where we've met um people and institutions that have decided to put their money where their mouths are. That's yeah. the one issue that I have with a lot of um accelerators and institutions and incubators and what have Pitching you on the continent. Jesus Christ, how <laughs> many can they be? So you've incubated me, you've mentored me. Then what? Because at the end of the day we Then still what? need to finance uh, it's not even the, the financing fairy it's you've yeah. mentored me but give me the money to then now actually enact what you've taught me to do because yeah. you can't now teach me to do something and then be like shop um catch you in maybe six months time and you're like but you know i still don't have money <laughs> i still can't go into a market and point? compete i, What's I can't the point? hire people there's no, there's nothing i can't prove my mvp there's nothing yeah. um which is why i'm really excited at seeing the advent of more um female led um vc um early stage funds that are coming into the continent where yeah. it's literally that 10,000 or 30,000 is the difference between you making it or breaking because it just it just just gives you runway yeah. it's not even to say <laughs> fari is turning a profit but it's to say can fari wake up exactly <laughs> can fari wake up tomorrow in taiken can you pay for a taxi can you buy bread to eat during lunch so well, that you can solve these problems it's literally it. yeah. it's it's literally those little things that i think are differentiating us between um the rest of um the space especially um uh, west africa and now most recently north africa and yeah. of course you know europe and all those other places just those little checks that really give someone that um that opportunity to, to try um challenges as usual capital is get of zim um the scale doesn't help sometimes <laughs> but my tenants don't help as well yeah. but as i've said that um it's making sure that some of these things work in your advantage Yeah, look at for you yeah. look for female focus funds why not look yeah. for them try try for them black focus funds look for them try for them and um just keep shouting until eventually someone, someone says okay damn it here's money get off my case <laughs> that's what we did it worked yeah and and i don't know if you're actually in a position to like answer this or not but yeah. when you so some of these financing uh, <coughs> yo i don't know if calling it a financing round is like two grand but some of these like uh, mm. when you do get this financing uh are you like trading equity for it like what's your approach as a business um as a business i think i'll just speak for ourselves um yeah um we have been using safe agreements um this is because we're, we're just still in the in the the early stage yet yeah. uh we definitely we're still raising our pre-seed round um so we we'll then definitely be now be looking at converting that into actual equity yeah. but we're looking at maybe using a mix of equity and debt uh, because we definitely need more debt than we need to to trade off equity at this point yeah but um advice is literally use what works for you safe agreements have been great because they don't force you to value your business when you're like Yeah, when it scraps, right? It's what metric can I use <laughs> to have an exit for 10 months? You know, have, revenue yeah, is still coming in six months. I have no months. assets. I have uh, What am I using? 10x what? 4x what? Right? Discounted yeah. cash flows on what? What cash flow am I discounting? The cash is flowing. There's nothing, right? There's nothing. Am I <laughs> doing this and say, "Guy, ah, think I'm worth a million." From what? Yeah. Cool. So, um really safe agreements have really been helping. 
convertible notes, I would caution people against them because convertible notes have timelines. So maybe explain that a bit more. So a convertible, <laughs> a convertible note is a loan that says if you do not pay me back in X amount of time, they will give you X amount of time, let's say yeah. three years time. Right, I'm giving you a million. If you don't pay me back this million in ten, in uh, in three months, in three years time, either you owe me a million five hundred thousand rands, five hundred thousand, right, or yeah. um, you give me twenty percent of your company. Guys, yeah. do you and, know and what three happens in fly three years? By. It flies by. <laughs> <laughs> From the moment you signed that, it's like fast forward. The like. clock is just ticking. It's ticking. It's like, I remember we offered one was, and we we're like, ha ha. It's not that we doubt ourselves, but yeah, man. Like Africa is a crazy place. Anything. Can and then you, and then you then look at what's happened COVID. now, COVID, and COVID. now this recession that's COVID. come that after was two COVID. Years, right? That was two years. So now we're essentially going into like maybe four to five years where. Money is... And that note is, is here saying TikTok, TikTok, <laughs> sister, how far? Equity and so or you owe me money. Every right thing, but the economy is just crashing it's as refusing. it is. It's refusing. It's refusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, yeah. Yeah, that would yeah, be... Yeah, so um, <laughs> I would just caution you guys. I know people love them these days because it's like, oh, I'll just pay them back. Oh. Maybe the last thing I'd ask you to, to close off... Um, like you indicated, you guys have moved out of Zim. I think you've kind of hinted at some of these differences between Zim and other territories. Mm. But um, on the ground, what are some of these drastic differences that you've seen where you'd be like, if Zim could get to a place like this, it would be a better place and we would come back at, uh, uh, to solve problems in Zim? Uh... Okay, that's like a two, 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 two-fold answer. Yeah. Um, one, um, let me look at the funding part. Zim, guys, um, funding, funding, especially from venture capitalists, literally people are saying, I'm trying this out. It's either do or die kind of money. Because I yeah. think we've got a lot of private equity, um, and that's now where the difference comes in, where a lot of people that think they are VCs are actually private equity investors. Yeah. Private equity is, you know, you're giving money to a company that has got proven um, track record of trading in a profit X, Y, Z, right? Yeah. But then you can Not now... exactly be, like a startup, is it? You no, know, that's an SME, right? You yeah. know, we have, we have, we have um, raised money via PE before, so I, I know the difference. Yeah. But you cannot be calling yourself a VC when you are asking for PE, kind of metrics that. and it requirements. It doesn't work out, <laughs> guys. It doesn't work out. Yeah. So we definitely need more um, venture capital funders um, on the ground who are willing to give small checks. Yeah. Don't now be saying I'm giving a million, but uh, who, who is there asking? I just need, need 10,000. Yeah, I need 20,000 you know, to know. survive another year. Get, your, get those <laughs> metrics in place and say maybe you need an MVP, you need XYZ, but you know, let let me hold your hand. We can't now be forced to all be looking at outside of Zim to look for money. We yeah. all know what's going on out there. Yeah. If the larger guys, the credible guys, are struggling to raise money out there, what about What us? about Zim, yeah. And, you know, what about Zim 15 startups? million people, your market. And from that 15 million, the market is maybe... One million is a stretch. Calling any 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 product that yeah. you give to to Zim people, considering our, our economic situation. But it's scalable. Situation. It's scalable. Yeah. If you can prove your MVP, look at what happened to us. You can prove the MVP. It works. Yeah. It's not just okay, and cool. Then, am I shutting it down here or am I taking it out there? Just treat it like an MVP place. Test it out and then t take it out so at the yeah. very least. But we need more people that are willing to put their money where their mouths are. That's my goal. If I can. God willing, Shem. Make <laughs> enough money as a founder, either through exit or salaries or whatever, right? Yeah. Even if I've got a fund just 100,000, I'm giving like 10K checks, 5K, just to say, I've Let's tried. Let's extend that runway for, for other exactly. guys. Exactly. Try something, right? Yeah. You know, um, just really to put my our money where our mouths yeah, are. Mouth Second one, impact, guys. You are not everyone is an impact organization. How <laughs> we want to make money? <laughs> ha, why must everyone now have are social you, socially driven what's, what metrics? Are the, what are these ones? These new ones from from the UN? Um, these SDGs. <laughs> SDGs. What SDG do you stand for? <laughs> the zero poverty. Yeah, I mean, okay, right. how though, right? Yeah, it's not, a bit. It's a bit condescending at times. You're it's forcing you're forcing these businesses to conform to a metric that may not be applicable in the next two years time when you've lost interest. When you've, in, yeah, as I an think that's always um, that's always the the frustrating thing about uh, those kind of 
these things almost come as a wave mm. and leave as a wave and you're supposed to like shift your whole company's focus around it doesn't make sense in, i think in, in in media i've been seeing a lot of um climate change act, oh, activism the, it's, the, it's the new one yeah. it's the new it's the There's new hot a lot one of, and they're saying if you make content around this this and this we'll get funding we'll get we'll give you money so what was i saying funding um of course um we need more people with money putting yeah. it there yeah. um these, impact things these impact metrics um and i think just um the attitude of will being willing to try to fail right not everyone is going to be a uh, an amazon or a paystack yeah. or that <laughs> way right we're all not right yeah but just having that attitude of let me just try it won't kill you guys just just trying because yeah. i don't know how many people out there i've spoken to be like oh can you hold my hand through this and you're like my guy okay when what have you done <laughs> no i had an idea okay <laughs> where are you in yeah. the state from have, from idea what have you done how far like we need to do something <laughs> first as ourselves before yeah. before laugh. someone else comes in and they're like hey i like what you're doing you know let me let me help you it's easier to convince and this is not me trying to be an ass right yeah. it's me knowing this from <laughs> first hand experience <laughs> having tried that same tactic of help me with my idea like yeah. i remember like a very um honest uh, conversation with my best friend he works for um, a dfi right yeah i was trying this thing she was like you know what you're being annoying right now um <laughs> i have no incentive to help you at all because this is your idea it's not mine um you've done nothing so why yeah. should i why should i then do legwork why? for you <laughs> when you don't believe in yourself you haven't followed through you don't believe in yourself enough to even just try it could be the wrong thing but try something damn it yeah. so it's just trying that out um anything else guys that's just macroeconomic and microeconomic and statutory factors we all know what must happen yeah. better. that's it <laughs> we must just it's, focus on the things that we, we as can entrepreneurs control. can try and and fix for ourselves everything else how that's just more a cause for debate yeah <laughs> cause for debate yeah. is true yeah yeah it's been it's been nice chatting to you it's been, ah, it's been, it's been a vibe i hope i made sense to you guys hey um i think you did we'll it's, it's still a journey definitely <laughs> i don't have all the answers please yeah. don't look at me as oh google no i don't have the time limit i don't know what i'm doing i am trying <laughs> it out but the only thing that i'm doing better than most is getting up um getting up every day and trying again may not be 100 percent, maybe 10 percent today but try and get up and try again incremental that's, that's the only thing you yeah. can do right also one last thing yeah. entrepreneurship is also not the answer for everyone guys please please <laughs> Don't kill yourself. <laughs> the anxiety, the stress, yeah. it's it's not worth it on some scale. I remember there was a time where I got a job offer from like a, what's the, someone who's now a client because yeah. of a competitor back then and they're like... When was this? <laughs> <laughs> it was last year, right yeah. before we made the decision to change the business model, right after we shut down. Yeah. And I was like... Yeah, that was a vulnerable time. Do like, hey, they could smell it. I was ripe for pickings because I've ex- <laughs> experience. I've got the con- contacts within um, the continent, right? I know three quarters of the logistics aggregators. As much yeah. as we may have been doing small potatoes here, we were active and we're loud about it, right? Yeah. Like a little chihuahua. <laughs> you're not doing. You're not big, but you're very you're noisy. A lot of noise. People know People that there's someone there in Zim <laughs> doing something. I may not be doing much, but you know I exist. <laughs> So they're like, just come join us and, you know, be head of XYZ. And I was like, a salary for once where I'm not worried about how the money is coming survive. in. Lamy is just a pay slip every month. And I'm just like, ding, ding. I got that uh, <laughs> notification. I didn't thought about it. But then I was like, <laughs> let me try one last time. But in closing, guys, not everyone should be an entrepreneur. It's not worth it. I would not recommend it. If you have a choice to do something that is secure do so <laughs> save yourself you know what's the funniest thing about that uh, i spoke to someone uh, last year mm. and their question was is there anything such as a secure thing anything that's not entrepreneurship is secure. trust me <laughs> trust me the fact that i can go to you and be like ah for my paycheck how far Mia, who, who do i go to if people coming to me, but there's yeah, no one. My co co-fa- I'm just you. looking at my co and she's all looking at me, and I'm like, "More one." How far this month? Oh, oh, it's making sense. Okay, but shit. Okay, <laughs> but it 
make sense this month, but you're already worrying about the 31st of next month yeah, yeah. before you've even finished this it's month. It's almost like you're perpetually in crisis. You're, exactly. You're always well aware of your like, runway and what you don't have. You've paid the date, but there's another one coming. Like, it's... All is firefighting. That's <laughs> fighting fires. Okay. Yeah, but there's, in a, in a very twisted and morbid way, there's something fun about that as well. So. Yeah, because, you know, we like the <laughs> taste of our own blood, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been great chatting to you, man. Um, thanks for, for giving me the time. Cool. It's no good problem. seeing you after COVID and all these weird made things it. Still here. that have happened for now. Uh, yeah, true, yes. That's not even a threat, it's a promise. Nah, I kid, I kid you, I kid you. I'm only in Zim for now. Enjoy me while you can. Anyway, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on Great. your show. Yeah, show. Jeez, man, that, that sounds very TV like. Right? <laughs> on your podcast, on your. Yeah, yeah, show. Sure. The show works. Yeah, well, cool. Great.